Hi, I'm Carl Pearson, and uh, this is uh, entitled Recovering Many Thousands of Dollars in Abandoned Property Now Belonging to You. Uh, now that money is becoming increasingly scarce for most Americans, <clears throat> I want to tell you how you may be the owner of anywhere from zero to one million dollars or more and what you have to do to learn how much is owed to you and how to get paid. There are some aspects of this which are relatively unknown, uh, which should encourage you to watch the whole video instead of saying to yourself, well, I already know this and why waste my time? I've been familiar with the cheat laws for more than 50 years and learned a lot when doing my research for this video. I'm talking about the nation's S-cheat laws, which every state has. You and I have seen many pages of newspaper listings of the names of persons who have abandoned property in uncashed checks, unused gift cards, abandoned checking and savings accounts, unredeemed insurance policies, security deposits, overpayments, stock brokerage accounts, as shareholders of companies as they undergo changes of name and hide the original name on the stock certificate, for assets in safe deposit boxes with no claimants, and countless other assets that are turned over to the states each year as a requirement of law. There is even an association for the state administrators called the National Association of Unclaimed property administrators. This association states NAPA, N-A-U-P-A, is the leading trusted authority in unclaimed property. We help individuals claim their unclaimed property and help businesses ensure compliance per state law in annual reporting. In fact, the NAPA organization provides access to the state's databases for you to search. NAPA also states, quote, search by state or province recommended. Most states make it easy to check for your unclaimed property. Each state maintains a database of unclaimed property for that state and by law attempts to return the property to its rightful owners. Use unofficial state, uh, I'm sorry, use official state government websites to conduct free searches. It's free to search if you use your official state government's unclaimed property website. Use the interactive map below to go directly to your state's official program website. From there you can conduct a free search for your unclaimed property. Be sure to check each state you've lived or done business in. That's the end of the quote and instructions. So now that I've given you the first place to go, I want to let you know a few things which are important for you to know. One, about one in ten persons determine that they are in fact owed money, but I'm going to explain how you can increase these odds perhaps to 100%. Two, the states have about $50 billion in property converted to cash at the time of the SG. So, now, this is an aside. Safe deposit boxes unknown to anyone but the owner, now deceased, would SG to the state for non-payment of, of the rental fee. But in Switzerland, the multi-million dollar secret numbered accounts, which become unknown to exist at the death of the owner, as cheat to the owner of the bank. But in 2015 this changed, so that accounts with no contact in 10 years, which remain dormant for another 50 years, must be turned over to Switzerland. So that doesn't mean much to a 60-year-old Swiss bank owner, so I guess their law hasn't really changed in Switzerland. Anyway, three, as cheats are not new and have their antecedent in feudal England, so there is no practical limit to how far back you can go other than proof that you'll need to establish uh, for your ownership. 
4. There is no statute of limitations. The state is the custodian of your property, and you have a right to establish that you're entitled to it. 5. One person went back 31 years and recovered $10,000 in malpractice insurance refunds to a doctor that had not been cashed. 6. No interest or dividends are given on the escheated amount. This is because the escheated asset, say 100 shares of GM stock, is valued in money on the date of the escheat, and it is this converted value that you are entitled to without interest instead of the stock. 7. Here is what I think you could do to dramatically increase your participation in the $50 billion escheat fund. List, list each address, city, and state in which you have lived for each corporation or other entity you owned or controlled, list the state and date of incorporation and list each address, city, and state. Now think carefully on this next one. List every person through whom you were either an heir at law or residuary legatee, directly or indirectly, or possibly had an unsatisfied bequest and the address, city, and state for each such person. For example, you might have been the heir at law or residuary legatee of your mother and father, and perhaps received no distribution, but they might still have abandoned property claims which you are entitled to pursue as their heir or residuary legatee. Think of your relatives and what could have been the distribution if they had died with a million dollar estate. You should list each of your deceased relatives and figure out through whom you have any present entitlement to any additional property that can be located. So once you do this for yourself, you might want to do this for others for a fee. That is a percentage of the money collected. This would be a way to supplement your income while working from home. NAPA states, unclaimed property finders or, quote, locators, unquote. There are legitimate organizations that offer unclaimed property finder services for a fee. Many businesses, sometimes called finders or locators, offer to find legitimate lost property for owners and inform them of how to obtain it for a fee, usually a percentage of the total fund that's found. Some states limit the fee to 10%. Are finder organizations regulated? Many states require finders to register within the state or regulate business activity or licensing in some way. There may even be a public listing of regulated finders within the state. Be sure to check your state's unclaimed property finders law for information on finders practicing within your state. Now, here's my comment on that. Don't believe that the fee protects you. It only serves to reduce the number of persons who will take on your case. The fee ceiling is really imposed to limit the number of claims against the escheated fund held by the state so that the state has to pay out less. In summary, you might have a few hours to devote to locating money that now belongs to you. And even if you don't find anything, you will, require a, you will acquire a valuable skill that you can use to find money belonging to other people for a fee. Make sure you learn any applicable laws relating to registration and the amount of the fee that you can charge. Well, I've said what I wanted to say and I'll be back soon with my next video.